understanding cash flow statements. In this reading, we will talk about the components and format of the cash flow statement. We will talk about the linkages between the balance sheet, income statement and cash flow statement. We will talk about how the cash flow statement is prepared and that is perhaps the most testable element of this reading. And then finally, we will talk about cash flow statement analysis. The cash flow statement provides important information about a company's cash receipts and payments during an accounting period. Note that the income statement gives us information about revenue, expenses and net income. But revenue, expenses and net income are all based on accrual accounting. So just because a net income is high doesn't necessarily mean that the company generated a lot of cash. On the other hand, the cash flow statement tells us exactly how much cash is coming in and from what sources. The cash flow statement is a vital information source that assists users to evaluate a company's liquidity, solvency and financial flexibility. For an analyst, it is crucial to estimate future cash flows. As you will see in later readings, to value a company, we need future cash flows and then we discount those future cash flows in order to come up with a current value of a company. So clearly, it is essential to value or to estimate these future cash flows. The cash flows can then also help us determine whether there is sufficient money to pay for investments, whether there is sufficient money to pay back lenders and equity holders. Coming now to the components and format of the cash flow statement. The cash flow statement has three parts. The first part shows us cash flows related to operating activities. Operating activities are activities that are part of the day-to-day -day business operation of the company. And here are classic examples of operating activities. The second part of the cash flow statement is investing activities. These are activities associated with acquisition and disposal of long-term assets. And the third part is financing activities activities related to obtaining or repaying capital. And here are the typical examples of financing activities. I just want to make a note here that operating activities in the context of the cash flow statement is not exactly the same as the operating part of a income statement because in an income statement under the operating segment, you might see items such as gain on sale of equipment. So on the income statement that appears as an operating item, however, on a cash flow statement, the cash related to the sale of equipment would show up as an investing activity. Let us look at a quick example. JFK Enterprises recorded the following. And we need to look at these entries and determine what is the net cash flow from investing activities. For a question like this, you need to look for two items. One is you need to look for cash flows and whether the cash flow is a investing activity. So let us create two additional columns, whether or not each item is a cash flow. And the second is whether or not it is a investing activity. Purchase of equipment. This is a cash flow. Equipment falls under investing activity. So this is investing. Gain from sale of a van. So van is equipment. So it would be investing, but it is not a cash flow. The gain from sale is not a cash flow in of itself. However, the receipts from sale of the van, this would be a cash flow and this is a investing activity. Dividends paid are not a investing activity. These, uh, this is a financing activity. So clearly it does not fall in here. 
interest and preferred dividend paid again this would not fall under investing and salaries paid would also not fall under investing so we are only left with these two elements the purchase of equipment means that money went out so that is negative receipt from sale of van would be a uh, positive so the net cash flow is minus 70 plus 18 which gives us a net outflow of 52000 so negative 52000 is the investing activity we can either say it's negative or we can say that it is a outflow this is a very important slide from a testability perspective and it talks about the summary of differences between IFRS and US GAAP related to different cash flow items. When a company receives interest income, should we classify that as operating or investing? A company receives interest income when it invests in the bonds of another company. Now, notice I use the term invest. What IFRS says is that this interest received could be either shown as a operating cash flow or a investing cash flow. So IFRS gives flexibility to companies to decide how to categorize interest received. US GAAP, however, says that interest received is always an operating cash flow. Interest paid, this is where a company issues a bond or this is where a company borrows money and then pays interest. IFRS says that this cash flow can be classified as operating or financing. US GAAP says that it is always operating. And I hope you can see the rationale behind this financing option in IFRS. When a company is issuing a bond, that is a financing mechanism. So the interest paid when a company issues a bond could arguably be classified as a financing activity. Dividends received. This is where a company invests in the shares of another company and receives dividends. IFRS says that the cash received as the dividends received could be classified as operating or investing. US GAAP says that this has to be shown as operating and finally dividends paid this would be dividend on the company's own stock under IFRS the classification would be operating or financing under US GAAP the categorization is financing notice US GAAP does not give any options so in a sense remembering the US GAAP categorization is easier it is always operating except when a company pays dividends. With IFRS, you need to recognize that there is always an option. One of the options is always operating and the other option depends on whether the activity is financing or investing. You must learn this table. The curriculum provides a little more detail related to other cash flow elements such as bank overdrafts, taxes paid, and then the curriculum also talks about the format of the cash flow statement. You can simply read these. I don't think they are overly testable, but still it would not hurt to go over this material. From a format perspective, IFRS allows both direct or indirect, but the direct is encouraged. US GAAP also says direct or indirect. Direct is again encouraged. A reconciliation of net income to cash flow from operating activities must be provided regardless of the method used. As you probably gathered from the previous slide, a cash flow statement can be presented in either a direct format or a indirect format. And specifically, it is the operating activities that can be presented in one of these two formats. The direct format is easy to understand. Essentially, it is taking the income statement and expressing the items on the income statement from a cash perspective. So instead of saying revenue, we say cash collected from customers. Instead of saying cost of goods sold, we say cash paid to suppliers and so on. 
At the bottom, we have the operating cash flow. And this will be arrived at by taking the cash from customers and then subtracting all these cash payments. With the indirect format, we start with the net income and make several adjustments to come up with the operating cash flow. Non-cash activities. A non-cash transaction is any transaction that does not involve an outflow or inflow of cash. It must be disclosed in either a footnote or supplemental schedules to the cash flow statement. An analyst should incorporate non-cash transactions into analysis of past and current performance and include their effects in estimating future cash flows. An example of a non-cash activity is given right here. The conversion of a face value 1 million convertible bond to 1 million worth of common stock. Now this is clearly non-cash but this might have implications on how much money is available to common shareholders in the future.